Today we want to talk about the future of the Android Open Source project. As some of you may have seen the notes from Graphene OS saying, hey, this could be the last release. And if you follow along with what was going on on the X thread, then uh, you'll see that there's a little bit more to it than that. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Thanks for checking out this video. Subscribe to the channel if you like more content like this. And today we will talk about the future of the Android Open Source Project and the downstream custom ROMs. Of course, if you know, if you follow my channel, I use Graphene OS. I also use uh, Lineage. I have Graphene on this Pixel phone here. I have it on my Pixel tablet. And I have lineage on a few other spattering of phones as well. Basically, I like custom ROMs. And I like the custom ROMs because they give us, you know, fewer nonsense features built in. They also give us more privacy options, more flexibility, and more control. Effectively, custom ROMs give us a lot more use and a lot more enjoyment out of our devices. And so when I saw the posts a couple of days ago, Graphene OS basically saying, hey, this could be our last version. And so I'm to go ahead and have a look at this and see what is going on. So in uh, Cyber Insider uh, had an article here, privacy focused Graphene OS warns Google is locking down Android. Now it does turn out, let me just give you the forefront out, out front, Graphene OS is not going away that we know of. Uh, but it will become a lot more difficult to manage and maintain. And that really is the core of what is behind this particular issue. So uh, we did actually report on this a little bit back a few months ago. And uh, this is really just the, the rooster coming home to roost, <laughs> as it is. And uh, effectively what is going on is with Android 16, they are releasing code in a different way. Whereas the whole Android open source project was mostly Google with a few other people. Now they are maintaining it nearly entirely internally, but they are separating out the device maps and creating a new reference device. And that really is the core of what is going on. Now, effectively, this does not impact most other ROMs a whole lot more than it has in the past, but it deeply impacts the Pixel devices, which is where Graphene OS has an issue because Graphene only supports your Pixel devices because we've had a solid device tree for all Pixel devices, and it allowed an easy ability to strip out the things you need to strip out, add the things you needed to add, and you had a device tree for each individual build. And that was a very beneficial thing. But that is going away, unfortunately. So looking at the article here, privacy focus Graphene OS warns Google is locking down Android. So they say, in May we began to Preparing to port to Android 16, despite our most active senior developer responsible for leading OS development being unavailable, Android 16 launched today and porting is going to be significantly more difficult than we were expecting. And so uh, there is more to this. We'll dig into the thread a little bit more here. But effectively what they are doing is Android was, they, basically the source code is released. This is called the AOSP or the Android Open Source Project. And this is the fact that this is open source and released under Apache 2.0 license allows any phony manufacturer to take the device and to modify it for their own devices or modify the code in a way that they wanted on an individual device. So Samsung would take the Android open source code. They would produce the proprietary behemoth that they have crammed onto their hardware and they have then released it. But other people can say, well, let me take their source information from their particular device. Let's reverse engineer this and let's add some features. Let's take some features out and they can then release a custom ROM like Lineage. Well, what's going on here is Pixel used to be the reference device, meaning that the Android code would effectively reference the Pixel device being a piece of Google hardware. Now, speculation is because of the antitrust case, and one of the things people have talked about is forcing Google to sell off Android. And if they happen to do that, the way that they were running the Android system itself would be quite 
interesting to figure out how to untangle. And so one hypothesis is they are working on untangling it by creating the Android open source project to a new reference device, this being Cuttlefish, which is a virtual device. This is effectively the type of device if you install something like Wadroid. We've done a video on installing Wadroid, allowing you to install a, uh, a, um, a virtualized Android device on your computer. Typically, that would be the default Android device you could get, although you could get a lineage device for that as well. The new Android open source, starting with 16, is going to be based on Cuttlefish, which is a virtual device, not a physical device, meaning that some of the uh, official testing isn't quite as accurate as it was. And where they used to release the pixel specific tree, they are no longer doing that. Basically saying we are holding back the device tree for the pixel. They're still releasing the images as they have in the past, but they're not releasing the whole device tree, making it way more difficult in order to go in modify the code and make any security updates, particularly for a device like Graphene that wants to be focused on, uh, on uh, uh, security above all things. It becomes a lot harder to see what security patches have done. Additionally, whereas each one of the kernel commits was individual, so you can look at each one of those individual commits, they're squashing that down to a single commit on each release, meaning it's a lot more difficult to see what type of changes have done in the kernel. And this applies to all Android, not just the Pixel device, <clears throat> which means that while it is still released in open source and it is still released under the Apache code, you can still use the modifications. The problem is for any custom ROM, it is going to take significantly amounts more time and resources in order to get them out. So in a way, it is right. These changes are still technically in the spirit of open source, but they will make it a whole lot more difficult for many custom ROM manufacturers to code, develop, test, and deploy. So they are right in some of these respects, but wrong in others, and that they are moving towards uh, they are moving towards a, a new device. Now, the, looking at the whole thread here, uh, the uh, basically the original senior developer uh, was called out to uh, some war. So you know, stop wars, folks. You know, um, but. Uh, that developer's called away. Uh, hopefully he's doing well. Hopefully he can come back to the Graphene OS project soon. Uh, but he goes in and discusses a whole lot more about what's going on in a lot of individual things. And really, June 10th is when stuff was unfolding here. So we did far more preparation, they say. They weren't able to obtain the OEM partner access. We did extensive reverse engineering uh, for the changes. And the developers also practiced redoing previously quarterly posts. So, so they went ahead and practiced with some of what they had to kind of get into the group. Very good strategy. Let's practice on a known uh, so that when it comes to the unknown, that we have a, um, a better uh, chance of success. Unfortunately, Android made the changes, which will make it harder for us to port to Android 16 in future releases. We will also be adding support for new pixels much more difficult. We're going to need to focus on making Graphene OS devices sooner than we expected. So you can start to expect that or another OEM coming in behind. We don't understand why the changes were made. And it's a major turn in the wrong direction. Google is in the process of losing multiple antitrust cases. Android and Chrome being split into separate companies has been requested, and they may be preparing for it. Uh, all the, also, another pre, uh, prevailing theory is budget costs, cutting back the costs, of course. Um, so, curiously... Um, Curiously, the uh, stopping the antitrust uh, makes them more monopolistic, um, makes them more evil and more difficult to work with. How wonderful. All right. So uh, the first says further here, we're hard at work in getting the port to Android 16 done. There's a large amount of additional work we weren't expecting. It can take longer than our usual to port it. So this means security updates will be late to Graphene OS. So that's a problem. Having our own devices meeting our hardware requirements would reduce the time pressure to uh, uh, for new releases and could be used to obtain early access ourselves based on tax of the OEMs. Paying what we will need, it will cost millions of dollars. That's kind of sad because Graphene operates on you know donations. So if you do like Graphene, I'd consider you 
uh, helping support the project. We've made lots of pro uh, progress on porting Android 16 already. If things haven't been made, this is the next day. Uh, they've been made hard for us. It'd likely be ready to publish experimental, uh, but they are actually um, pushing the alphas and the betas through there. Speculation about the result of Google losing the antitrust case is likely losing severe uh, several more soon. They're preparing for Android and Chrome to split out. So that is um, what his thought is. And this is uh, from the New York Times there. And uh, what did want to mention that uh, I'm not sure if it was in this thread or not. Uh, Google responded to the requests. Let's see if I can find it. It's going to be buried. It's buried inside of one of these threads. I saw it at one point in time, so I'm not going to find it uh, really quick off the top. So from Android Authority, uh, AOSP isn't dead. Google just landed a huge blow to the custom ROM developers. This was from June 12th. So what they're doing here is they're talking about how Google has made it harder to build custom ROMs for Pixel phones by omitting the device trees. So basically, when they were developing for Pixel phones, it was always super easy because all developer trees were always published because Pixel really was that reference device that Android was kind of built for. But Google saying, hey, we want to go our own direction. Maybe this has to do with AI. That's a possibility as well. Maybe it's the antitrust. Uh, maybe it's uh, budget costs. But for whatever reason, they changed the reference from being a physical pixel device to a virtual cuttlefish fish device, which we already talked about. So the advantage of the cuttlefish is it is completely device agnostic. You can easily use that. Anybody can easily use this freely in an emulator, and then you can uh, modify the individual lines of code for your in particular device. And so that's really how these custom ROMs are created. But what they're doing now is instead of focusing on that pixel, they're creating the code, releasing it for Cuttlefish. So effectively, it's easier for Google to push it out. They don't have as many trees. But another key factor, they can keep some of that Google stuff proprietary in the Pixel phones. So that certainly is a problem. This, again, does make it much more difficult for the organizations like Graphene OS uh, and even Lineage to develop for the Pixel phones, which was extraordinarily easy. Now it basically just goes up to the same level it was with nearly any other device. So Google says, no, it is not going away. Uh, saying Chow, I think I have no idea how to pronounce that. Uh, sorry, this is the uh, Google. Um, uh, this is the Google employee. We're seeing some speculations. AOSP is being discontinued. To be clear, it is not going away. It was built on the foundations of being an open platform for device implications, SOC vendors, and instruction set architectures. AOSP needs a single t target that is flexible configurable and affordable, independent of any particular hardware, including those from Google. For years, developers have been making Cuttlefish available on GitHub as a reference device for AOSP and GSI. This is the generic uh, system image, I believe generic system image, uh, basically a system image for that in theory is just works for any generic uh, device you have. Uh, we continue to make those available for testing and development, all still open source, all still available. So it's not like they're pulling something back other than their own private phone, basically pulling back the Pixel devices in the same way that a Motorola or a Samsung do, basically closing those parts behind your proprietary stuff. Now, how does this affect it? Um, uh, Nolan Johnson, who is a longtime contributor and reviewer for Lineage, says the process of removing ROMs for Pixel phones will become painful moving forward. So if Pixels aren't worth developing for, they might just be dropped, uh, which is kind of sad because Pixel devices are decent. I find them a good balance. They're, they're good hardware, but they're not overly priced. Uh, like I said, I got my, I mean, I got this one for 150 bucks at a pawn shop. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, it's probably worth a little bit more than we dropping a bunch of cash on a bunch of other stuff, too. Hey, throw that in at this price. We'll take it. Sure. <laughs> Why not? You know, there you go. Negotiation. Um, but even new ones, they're not as outrageously priced as a new flagship Samsung or a new flagship iPhone. Previously, Google made it simple for developers to build AOSP for Pixel devices, but that support is gone. Developers 
simply had to pull the configurations, add their customizations, and rebuild it. Now they will need to take the old device trees they released under Android 15 and blindly guess at reverse engineering from the pre-built binaries that are changed every month. So we're going to start seeing a lot more difficulty coming in. So this is because making a full Android build for a device, not just a GSI, requires a device tree, a collection of configuration files that define hardware layout, peripherals, proprietary file listings, and other devices for a specific device, allowing the build system to build proper image for that device. While Google previously handled the work, developers must now create their own device trees without access to the necessary proprietary code. So what's their purpose, of course? Oh, oh this the last next part here is actually important, too. Uh, Google's decision to quash the kernel source code's commit history also hinders custom development. Pixel's kernel source code was often used as a reference point for other devices uh, to take features, bug fixes, and security patches. But now, with this history now reduced to a single commit, this is no longer feasible. So that's the part where it can negatively impact all other custom ROM and even other OEM manufacturers if they do not have access to those. Although I could envision a backdoor deal they have with the big manufacturers that they could get those. It's just the rest of the plebs building the custom ROMs. They don't get those. And so it makes it a lot more difficult. Is this an example of embrace, extend, extinguish? Possibly. Is it something else? Possibly. Is it a response to the lawsuits? Possibly. There's a lot of speculation. Ultimately, though, the bit final take-home message here is that the, um, the Android Open Source Project is not going away. It is still open source. It is still available. It is still released under the same license, allowing anybody to still do what we've done with it in the past. For the most part, the development of non-pixel ROMs stays mostly unchanged, except for that whole kernel commit thing. That's a little bit more of a challenge. However, that being said, the, uh, the fact that um, uh, it remains mostly the same for almost all the devices is actually going to have fairly minimal impact. Although I would highly recommend if you're using something like a, a Calyx, which I think also uses Pixel, a Graphene OS, or even a Lineage on a Pixel device, I'd highly encourage you to throw some extra funds at the developers. They are going to have a lot harder time getting those devices up and ready and released as they should. So there is our thoughts today. Let me know your thoughts about this. Do you use custom ROMs? And if you don't, I'd highly recommend watching my video where we install the Graphene OS on this Pixel 5a device, which by the way, you no longer supported. Um, it's, uh, I think it might even be close to be on the extended security, but it's super easy to install Graphene OS on a Pixel device, whether that's a tablet or a phone. It's, all, it's not much more difficult to install something like Lineage, uh, but uh, definitely have a look at it. We'll leave that video out there to close with. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.